All right, guys, man, happy Friday. Welcome to Manufacturing E-Commerce Success. Man, there's somebody missing on stage today. Damon, where are you, dude? So, hey, if you're out there, Damon, pop in, say hi, or drop us some comments here. Damon's off having an amazing, amazing day today. So, Damon, you can let us know in the chat box what you've got going on. But, man, I am honored. I am thrilled to introduce our guest as a longtime friend. You know, like, in, like dude, we go back before... COVID. So that, that's like dog year. So I want to introduce everybody who I not, he needs no introduction. Chris Lukey, Mr. Manufacturing Happy Hour. How are you, brother? I'm great. It's good to be here. I always look forward to our conversations. Kurt, you bring a level of energy that is easy to feed off of, gravitate towards. So um, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics, which is marketing in the manufacturing space as we introduce I should say, continue to introduce. I think yeah. probably a lot of people are, have gotten the word. They're signed up. They're ready to fly down to Austin. But next week is the Industrial Marketing Summit in Austin, Texas. And I'm excited to do a little preview around that here. Well, man, we finally get to meet in person. It's so long overdue. I am just thrilled, honored, and just, you know, I know like with the whole COVID thing, just be prepared. I'll cover up and I'm giving you a big hug. Just I'm just warning you. Just when you see some crazy bald guy running at you, it's me, and I'm just going to be giving you a big hug. So just I look really forward hug. to said hug. That'll be an early <laughs> highlight of the trip. <laughs> nice. Well, thank you. P appeasing the old guy. I appreciate it, Chris. So, all right, let's go. Let's dive in. So, guys, uh, if you're out there, man, hey, Whitney Koch, Whitney Houston, I like to say. Whitney Houston's here today. Happy Friday. Guys, drop us a note. Let us know you're out there. Tell us where you're coming from. If you have any questions, boy, let us know what you've got on your mind. We've got an internet uh, industrial marketing expert here. We're going to be talking about the industrial marketing summit. So, Hey, Whitney, are you going to be at the summit? Oh, I can't, I get to meet Whitney in person. Are you kidding me? Oh, this is going to be so good. It's like the who's who, man, if you're not going to be at the summit, shame on you, right? Uh, Chris, is that, is that just Kurt? I have been telling people as far as like Q1 marketing investments go that this is easily the best marketing investment you can make because, yeah. um, you know, agenda aside, like, yes, we're going to learn a lot of stuff there, but you're going to be able to talk to the best practitioners in marketing, that's in right. the manufacturing space, in the industrial space. And that's really where people are going to get their long-term return on this event that, you know, this is, this is, it's not like a thousand person conference. We're talking a few hundred people. So this is the type of event where you build relationships, you build friendships. I try to avoid the word networking because I think yeah. it, you know, it can get overused sometimes and say, Hey, this is an event where you're probably going to walk away with a couple good, really new friends and a handful of really good new business connections yeah. that, um, can help you from marketing strategy or just bounce ideas off of because mm -hmm. it's not like it's going to be a bunch of, let's say, marketing companies in the industrial space. There will be some of them there and they have some of the best expertise in our space, but it's going to be people that work for robotics companies, for widget makers, for people that are supplying solutions to these end customers People are going to be able to meet with their peers that are having the same challenges, mm -hmm. the same issues, have the same opportunities on their horizon, and just will be great people to bounce ideas off of in the hallway between sessions, before mm -hmm. sessions kick off, at the bar afterwards. All of those opportunities are going to be there. It's going to be great. I am stoked to hang out with a lot of my friends down there, including you, um, but certainly ready to meet a bunch of new folks that you know, I've never really connected with before as well. So that was my very long winded no. intro to say, this is where the who's who of the marketing world in the industrial space is going to be next week, Austin, Texas. We hope to see you there. Well, guys, hey, you heard it here first from Mr. Manufacturing Happy Hour himself. And hey, we've got a few friends here in the crowd. I'm going to pull up hey, our buddy, Brian Fleming in the great city of Detroit. Go Lions, big weekend. We've got my, let's see, Whitney's here. She's uh, we get to see her. Uh, she's going to see both of us. Hey, we've got Miles coming over the pond in London. Uh, we've got Patrick here today. Kelly, Kelly's going to be at. Man, are you? Where's Where's Kelly? Here she is. Can't wait to see her, Kelly. I can't wait to see you in Austin. We've got Patrick here. Diane Byer is in the house, 
And hey, Diana, I just found out we might be doing dinner next week. So Diana, happy Friday to you. Can't wait to see you. We've met in person prior, so I can't wait to see Diane. Diana, she's doing a great job marketing. She's coming from the great city of Chicago. Chris, let's go here, guys. For anybody that is not familiar with Chris Lukey, I can't imagine there is anybody on the planet or in this little space. Share a little bit about who is Chris Lukey? What is Manufacturing Happy Hour? How do you make the world a better place? Yeah, so I'm I'm a longtime manufacturing industry guy. Um, I'm a mechanical engineer by degree, and I've predominantly spent most of my 10 plus year career at this point. It's weird to think that I've been doing this stuff for a decade now in some way, shape or form. I spent most of it on the sales and marketing side. You know, I started off as an engineer, but um, then, then I became an account person, worked with Rockwell Automation for the majority of that time in markets like Houston, Texas, San Francisco, California, here in Milwaukee, where I'm based now. Um, can't thank that organization enough for providing a great base and foundation for my career. And, you know, it's ultimately where the idea for manufacturing happy hour came about in 2016. You know, I, I tell people I was a sales guy that had just moved from Houston where I was calling on, let's say a more senior market folks that had been at their company for 20 to 30 years. And I moved out to California where you've all got the stereotypes in your heads. It's like a bunch of 20 and 30 year olds running around making decisions. And, yeah. and that was the same, same case for the, the tech industry and the manufacturing industry out there. So right. I was 28, 29 at the time. And I knew how I consumed content, videos, podcasts, et cetera. Yep. So I'm like, let me think of something that, that will gravitate towards that market of decision makers in that area. So manufacturing happy hour was formed as more of a, initially it was like a product update video yeah. series around automation technology. And then it quickly evolved. I should say, you know, over the uh, two year period or so evolved into the platform and community that it is today where manufacturing happy hour, it's really a leadership podcast disguised as a manufacturing podcast. So right. we get into the bits and bytes. We talk about the tech, but there's a lot of timeless information that we glean from our guests on the show. It's a weekly interview podcast for just to be very specific about it. Episodes come out every Tuesday and the executives and the leaders we interview on the show talk about how they're navigating challenges in industry, how they're getting through it, how they've led through difficult times, how they're recruiting the next generation into manufacturing. All of these issues that are on the minds of manufacturing leaders, we're trying to understand how other people have solved those challenges in the past or are currently addressing those opportunities that will allow them to take their careers, their businesses, and the industry as a whole to the right. next level. Right. So another way to phrase it, manufacturing happy hour is like TEDx meets how it's made. So I, you, <laughs> you, you were asking what my mission was, what my purpose, passion is. All that said, I help manufacturers tell their story to an ideal customer audience, the people yeah. they want to be talking to, the people they want to be hearing their message. So that's my elevator pitch, assuming we've got like 80 stories for me to, uh, to uh, 80 floors for me to tell that story. Cause that was a little yeah. long. <laughs> it's no, that was fantastic. And again, I love guys connect with Chris Lukey on LinkedIn and that is right in your headline. I absolutely love that. I help manufacturers tell their story to their ideal customer. Drop the mic. You just couldn't make that any simpler. Hey, I've got a couple. Uh, I want. Hey, Nate's here today. Go Blue National Champions to our friends in, in Ann Arbor. We've got Whitney saying, hey, Chris, I didn't know you were in Milwaukee. Uh, I have, Or you had a connection to Houston. We should meet up sometime. And uh, Keystone Click is in Milwaukee. Deal. Let's, Deal. Let's go, let's go here. Uh, you have a fascinating story. So Joel Sullivan is actually the leader of the pack for the mm -hmm. Industrial Marketing Summit, which we're going to be talking about in a minute. Now, you guys kind of reverse roles a little bit. So for folks that don't know your background, you live in Milwaukee, but let's uh, tell, tell everybody like you're and – and you know what? As you're doing that, I do have a question for you. On your LinkedIn – and I don't know if you remember, like last time we had so much fun. I did a bunch of digging on you, but we're going to be – we're going to be – focusing primarily on the industrial marketing summit, but you were a process engineer at Anheuser-Busch. So that kind of yeah. gives away my little, my little clue where you're from. Yeah. And then you also, you were a physics teaching and lab assistant. Mm -hmm. Can mm -hmm. you just share a little bit of your background, where you're from? And like, can you, you piqued my curiosity on the pro on the uh, physics teaching and lab assistant. Yeah. What, what was that? How did you end up in at that role? 
Yeah, so I'll I'll share a little bit of both. So the first part of the story, you were hinting at that that Joe Sullivan, I believe Joe was just on this like very recently, correct? He was. I'm not, yeah. yeah, I was yeah, yeah. So so Joe and I basically have a mere life in some way, because I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri, went to the Smet Jesuit High School there, then came up to Milwaukee, where I went to Marquette University for college. Um Joe Sullivan, on the other hand, grew up in Milwaukee, went to Marquette High, I believe, which is basically, you know, we basically went to the same high school, just in different cities. Yeah. yeah. And then he went down to St. Louis for college. I think I'm 99% sure he's a Wash U grad. Yeah. Um, and then he stuck around St. Louis. So we kind of flipped. Um, we both obviously go back to our respective homes uh, yeah. fairly frequently as well. So I have had the privilege of having a beer with Joe back in St. Louis before um great times there but yes so joe and i kind of have flipped lives in that regard and funny enough now we're both in like the industrial marketing space for yeah. our careers so very funny how that all worked mm -hmm. out um the other thing you were asking about was being a physics teaching lab assistant so yeah. you know that was that was one of my i would say college jobs so i was an engineering major at marquette university mechanical engineering and I, I had picked up a number of extracurriculars over the years. Some of those extracurriculars were actually jobs and things like that. Right. Um, I was the promotions director at the radio station. I booked concerts at Marquette at one point. But probably the extracurricular that was most in line with what I was at school to study was being a physics teaching lab assistant. So essentially what a lab assistant would do is it was our job. Uh, all Every physics class had a class component and a lab component. And it was my job to help the students execute on the lab component every week. So yeah. doing experiments to understand rotational motion, even more basics like, you know, position of velocity and acceleration, all of those type of activities. So that was a lot of fun grading lab papers, looking at results help. I mean, I think the most fun part of it was actually being in the lab and executing on the lab itself. Right. So right. that was uh, that was one of my many hats I wore when I was at Marquette University as a student. Well, very impressive. I, I just I had to bring that up. Hey, we've got a couple more friends here. Uh, Diane Byer, our friend in Philadelphia, says addressing the opportunities. My buddy Alan's in the house. Alan, happy Friday to you, dude. And Nate has a question here. So, Chris. Are you pretty much a broker of knowledge, but you provide the knowledge like you are a broker and a seller of of the offer you've created for these companies who need help telling their story? <laughs> Can you please answer that one? Yeah, so to I, I think I understand that question. So, you know, my my current business is really built around helping manufacturers tell their stories in a number of different ways. And a lot of what I do is I demonstrate how to do that on an everyday basis. It's through being consistent with content like a podcast, being consistent mm -hmm. with social media posting, uh, hosting events, for example. That's a big part of the Manufacturing Happy Hour mission um, is to bring together different people within the manufacturing ecosystem, investors, startups, large companies, small companies, you name it. Um, but I always tell people, it's like, hey, part of, telling your story again going back to my main mission i help manufacturers tell their story you know if you're doing something like recording a podcast or hosting an event it doesn't end at the end of that podcast mm -hmm. it doesn't end um at the end of the event heck it doesn't even begin at the beginning of the event it's all the promotion you do leading up to it or all the promotion to say hey make sure you check out this episode share those little clips those little insights from the people you featured on your podcast and hey, when the event is done, hopefully you hired a professional photographer to capture that event. I literally just shared a bunch of photos from the event we threw in San Francisco uh, a couple weeks ago this morning on LinkedIn. All that to say is I try to get people in the mode of thinking consistency. How am I consistently going to get my story out there? Um, and how am I going to do it in a way that breaks through the noise? That's a big part of it as well. So a lot of what I help customers with, whether they're a partner of the podcast, a sponsor on the podcast, or whether it's coaching their executive teams on how to leverage personal brands to yeah. elevate your overall company brand, I make sure I'm practicing what I preach on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that directly answers, hey, are you a broker or seller of the knowledge in this space? But that's that's what I try to do to help people 
understand what they need to be doing from, I'm not even going to say a marketing standpoint, because I'm, I'm really focused on the story and mm -hmm. the things that help folks really connect with the people the customers, the prospects that they want to be talking to. All right, man, dude, we've got so much to talk about. We're, we're going to be here for a little while. So we've got, hey, a couple comments. Whitney says, bless you, man. Physics were not my strong suit. And Nate says, thank you. Uh, this is gold. So, hey, we appreciate it. And hey, quick question there. Any events in Detroit coming up? How about that one? Bookmark your calendar for May 20th. Still a little tentative, but it looks like we might have a little Midwest manufacturing happy hour tour going on. So oh, nice. All yeah. right. Hey, May yeah. 20th, guys. Mark your calendar. Hey, we've got a friend from Sweden coming in today. Greetings to you. I am Swedish, so I love our friends from Sweden. Chris I was in Sweden 18 months ago. Uh, hey. first time visiting. Absolutely loved it. I was I was only in Stockholm for that trip, but I spent about five days there. Nice. Wonderful time, great food, great vibe, great culture, very safe, very clean. I mean, and summertime was the perfect time to be there. Hey, we've got a friend from Bangladesh and Nate says sweet. Brian says sweet. And then we've got to let's see. We're, we're back sweetness all around. Then, sweetness so, all around right now. All right, Chris, I have so many questions, but I do have to go there real quick. You were in Sweden 18 months ago. Pop quiz. Everybody would love to know how many countries has Chris Lukey visited? Hmm. I know the number. I do. do you, are, are you, or well, let, let's take some guesses before I reveal it. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, you know, we're going to, I'm going to dig in another comment. If you uh, drop in the chat box, how many countries has Chris Lukey visited? And I'll tell you, it's, it's, it's more than two, right? It's, it's, it's quite a few. You are just an international traveler, traveler, just very passionate. I'm going to go here, Chris. So I want to dig into like how you've built community and how, what it's done for you, your career. And then we're going to slide right into uh, everything that you're working on. We're, and then again, I'm going to keep you guys hanging on for a minute. We're going to dive deep into the industrial marketing summit. You and I connected, I think it was like literally, I think it was like five or six years ago, five, whatever it's been now. Yeah. And so you know, manufacturing happy hour. I was on LinkedIn. I was following you from afar. I believe you were in San Francisco at the time. Does that, does that sound right? Were you in San that Francisco? That is correct. That is correct. Yep. And I was very impressed what you had going on. It just really resonated with me, passionate about uh, manufacturing. I joined your group and just went wonderful. As a matter of fact, I just got a note from Samuel Mishu, a yeah. son of Greg Mishu. I mean, not, yep. we're now even getting the next generation coming into mm -hmm. your group. Mm -hmm. And so Jeff Long, and we could go on and on about your friend, your, the community that you've built. But um, hey, we've got a couple of comments. We've got uh, 10, 20 countries, 26 how many, uh, how many of you, how many of you hit? All right. So got to go a little higher. 26 was the closest. So I hit 35 last year when I went to the Dominican Republic for a wedding. And that was nice. fun because I had my birthdays in March and I was 35 last year in February when I hit. Nice. So I need to go, I'm about, I'm going to turn 37 this March. So I got to get to two new countries to continue to keep up with keep, my age. So keep it, hey, keep it going, brother. So I right, international traveler, community builder. What, you talked a little bit about, you know, what sparked your inspiration to, you know, get manufacturing uh, happy hour going. But what I love and the point I want to really make for folks you know, it does, you know, here you're at Rockwell Automation, major corporation. You could be at a small company. Nobody inspired, no, well, people inspired you. Nobody really mandated you like, hey, Chris, you need to get this going. This was totally initiative on your own. Talk about how you got it started and what, I I'd love for you to dig in just like, what has it done for you personally? The friendships, the relationships, the business mm -hmm. you built, what has Manufactured Happy Hour done for you? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'll be quite frank with people. It's the best thing I've done in my career up to this point. Um, you know, I mentioned I'm turning 37 this March. So the way I look at it, I've still got a long, fun career ahead of me. But up to this point, I think it was where it, you know, I would encourage this for everyone. It was really the first time I was, I felt like I was able to double down on all of my strengths because mm -hmm. I, I would say I'm a good sales guy, but I've I've been around, you know, the block a few times and I know what a great sales guy looks like. I would say I am a, a great promoter and know how to throw a great party and things like that. But, right. you know, I had enough sales chops and radio chops and marketing chops that manufacturing happy hour was like a great way to mix that together mm -hmm. in a bowl and mm -hmm. like have the platform that was going to allow me to play to my strengths and in turn 
sell my, you know, um, serve my customers, the people I work with in industry, the best mm -hmm. where manufacturing happy hour came from. Um, you mentioned your, I mean, you're totally right. It wasn't a mandate. There was never going to be a point in my career mm -hmm. or quite frankly, pretty much anyone's career where someone was going to walk up to them and be like, you know what we think we need. We need you to crack a beer at the end of the day at work and right. talk about automation. Right. Right. No one was ever going to say that. Right. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, the happy hour aspect, the beer aspect is kind of the surface level aspect that yeah. makes it cool and approachable and casual and feel like something where you can walk up and have a conversation with someone at a bar about automation or manufacturing or technology or really any of the topics that manufacturing happy hour has evolved into. But I think it was really during the pandemic was where. I realized what the true power of manufacturing happy hour was, which was the community around it. Because I remember it was the first week, it was that week of St. Patrick's day in March, 2020, where everyone was told to stay home. Everything was locking yeah. down. We really didn't know what was going on. Yeah. And I remember, and this episode is still out there. I can't believe it's going to be four years old, but on Thursday, March 19th, I believe it was, we had a little virtual happy hour. We had 12 people jump on Zoom. Um, you know, a handful of folks. I know you, Kurt, you yeah. know, Kurt, like Dave Griffith was in that group. Yeah, Dave, Tim yep. Shope was in that group, yep. like kind of the core yeah. group of the early manufacturing happy hour community. We got, we all got on board and we talked about, Hey, what are you seeing? What are you hearing right now? What are you feeling in industry? I know it's only like a couple days into this pandemic thing. Yeah. Um, and we did that for one round of questions and discussions. And then we circled back around. It's like, Hey, what, what do you think it's going to take to thrive during this time or make it through this time? And, and by the way, when I say this time, we thought we were only going to be home for like three weeks or a month or something like yeah. that at this yeah. point, we didn't yeah. realize Good. it was going to be like a year plus of our lives where we were moving into a new operating procedure. All this to say is, you know, manufacturing happy hour, the real power of it has evolved into community. And one of the reasons I started it, I mentioned there was a very uh, kind of a mix of a tactical and strategic reason to start it, to reach a younger demographic of manufacturing decision makers out in the Bay Area. But the other piece was, hey, it allowed me to play to my strengths. And I really hadn't, I, I hadn't seen something like this in industry yet. I really borrowed a lot of my ideas for manufacturing happy hour, you know, recording videos on my iPhone in front of a cool backdrop, sharing information on video, posting it to YouTube. All I did was look at other industries that were already doing that. I just happened to be one of the first people in the manufacturing industry, along with a handful of other early adopters, like the Making Chips podcast. There, yeah. there are a handful of other people that had kind of caught on to using social media and manufacturing before anyone else was using it. But I I just borrowed a bunch of ideas from other industries. I'm like, every other industry is making videos. Every other industry is doing podcasts. Why isn't, why is this not a big thing in manufacturing? So that was a, another very long answer. Oh, no, dude, that, hey, you don't, you, you, that's what you're here for, man, is to help educate us. And that's, and speaking of the word educate, what I love, you know, I was part of that early manufacturing mm -hmm. and it was, we got to, we were getting together pre COVID. I think we were getting together in 19. Yeah. And, you know, we were getting together and then, yeah, when the world shut down, you know, I remember, you know, being in my backyard, my wife, I'm like, I'm going to jump on this virtual call because there's, you know, you can't do anything else. Yeah. And I want to tell you, know, shamelessly, I, you know, I was writing a book at the time and you guys were just such a, you guys were just so supportive and just, you know, man, just, you were my accountability guys and just really helped me move along. And I just, I'm internally grateful to you all the support and love that you gave to me at that time. And I wasn't an automation guy. I was kind of an oddball. I'm an e-commerce guy for manufacturers. You're trying to target young people in uh, Silicon Valley. I'm in, I'm on the East coast and I'm an old dude. So I, you welcome me with open arms. Arms. I've just really welcome. And or I'm sorry, I've really appreciated your support, your friendship, but let's go here. You're doing the podcast at a major corporation and what, why I'm going here. If somebody's out there, they're a solopreneur, uh, solo marketer at a bigger company. And they're like, you know, boy, I've been thinking about mentioning this to my company. How would you recommend, or how do you suggest either to your clients or to somebody that like, Chris, I want to be in your seat. Like what mm -hmm. are some steps that they could take to kind of kick off their journey? Yeah. So to kick off, let's say a 
storytelling content creation journey or really getting your personal brand out there to the mm -hmm. people you want it to be mm -hmm. in front of how to kick that off i think starts with some very simple things um the first thing i would say is you don't have to create something like a big podcast mm -hmm. or manufacturing happy hour um platform mm -hmm. your platform can be your name it can be kurt anderson inc it can be chris lukey inc not i mean not literally of course right but the idea is you are your brand right. so you know and and i tell folks you don't have to go in there and create a lot of content right mm -hmm. out of the gate um i would get used to you know maybe posting on linkedin a couple times a week i always tell people because mm -hmm. i think of this in terms of a sales guy I block my calendar for sales meetings with customers. That's what I did during my career. Mm -hmm. I would block my calendar the same way to say, I'm going to spend 30 minutes on LinkedIn this morning. Mm -hmm. I'm going to post an insight that's mm -hmm. relevant to mm -hmm. the customers I serve in my industry. Mm -hmm. um, and that doesn't mean a product pitch. That means, hey, here's a trend I'm seeing in the automotive space if you serve automotive customers, for example. Um, that's what I would say in that capacity. So create a block time on your calendar to share content. And it doesn't need to be like a bunch of stuff, like do it once or twice a week, make it easy on yourself to start. The bigger thing I tell folks is if you're trying to build a platform, trying to build your personal brand, mm -hmm. one of the best things you can do is you don't even necessarily need to be the person creating the content. You can be going in and adding value mm -hmm. by commenting on other posts mm -hmm. for example like uh, a great example brian fleming is on here he's been listening to this he's been commenting he is excellent at getting into the comments on people's posts mm -hmm. um you know add value add your insights there to figure out you know look for folks in your network that are sharing content or search for a hashtag the, the you know the ampers uh, not the ampersand um the the number symbol um mm -hmm. and whatever trend you're looking for like mm -hmm. in our industry Hashtag smart manufacturing would be a great spot to start. Or um, if you really want to get into it, hashtag artificial intelligence, that might take you down a rat hole in a bunch of other directions. But think about or hashtag automotive. We were using the example of automotive manufacturers earlier. Go search for the conversations that are already taking place. And a hashtag is just one way to do it. Think about your industry associations. Think about your peers that are sharing content in your niche as well. Go in and comment it doesn't always need to be you broadcasting your insights in a post that's important but i think it's more important and a better way to differentiate yourself by being the person that gets in there on the comments and adds value to conversations that are already taking place so those are some of my thoughts on how to get started yeah i love that and a couple comments you know again as we have friends here you just uh, called out brian fleming great guy to connect with on linkedin he's a, a wonderful support agree with you we just had a nice chat last week he's doing incredible work helping folks with, with linkedin whitney's mm -hmm. here today she's with keystone click they're your neighbors of yours in milwaukee Lori hybe dear friend they yep. do incredible work with content marketing helping manufacturers so again guys in the chat box great folks here to you know this is community here create you know network and and uh connect with uh, with each other here on on linkedin now chris what i absolutely love a couple of things that you said that i want to uh, strip out there that consistency piece just kind of mm -hmm. get started you know uh we don't as manufacturers you know that have not been in marketing it's very you know god bless us right it's you know hey let me tell you about my o-ring let me tell you about my o-ring let me tell you about my you know like we don't have to talk about the product and features let's be human I'm going to slide into what you're going to be talking about next week. So guys, we're here with Chris Lukey, Manufacturing Happy Hour. I know, I think, we're, well, we just crossed the top of the hour. So if you're just joining us, let us know that you're out there. Drop a note in the chat. Connect with Chris here on LinkedIn. Chris, let's dive into Industrial uh, Marketing Summit. One of the part of your thing is humanizing your brand. I mm -hmm. just did a gig with, with Eddie yesterday. Eddie Saunders Jr. is on, I, like, dude, I don't know if my heart is going to be able to handle you and Eddie at the same time on stage. But you guys are going to be talking about humanizing your brand. How do you yeah. humanize your brand? Let's go there. Yeah. Well, I think one of the things I'm most excited to discuss during this panel, and it's going to be myself, Eddie Saunders, Nikki Gonzalez, and Jordan Yates. Um, we're, we're all part of a panel on how to humanize your brand. And I think one of the most important conversations that's going to come out from that is how do 
corporate brands leverage people with personal brands that are on their team? And how can folks that have a good personal brand better collaborate with corporate brands, the bigger company brand? Because I think that's an area that it's a two-way street. Like there are all ways we need to continue to evolve because there's not necessarily a perfect playbook for, hey, you know, I'm the marketing manager at a company and I've got four or five people on my team that have strong voices. They all have their unique voices. They're pretty in line with the corporate brand, but they also have their own edge to them as well. How do you balance that? Um, on the flip side, you know, let's say you're someone that has an established voice in industry and you're used to doing things your own way. What are ways that you can understand, okay, this is the voice of the company that I work with and how can I, you know, combine my voice with the company voice to share things that are relevant to both of us, right? Because at the end of the day, I, you know, personal brands, people that have their personal brands, they're not going to talk about the company they work for 100% of the time. I own my own business. I don't talk about manufacturing happy hour 100% of the time. I talk about other stuff as well that make up who I am as a person. So I'm really excited to have the conversation with Jordan, with Eddie, mm -hmm. with Nikki, and share some of my own insights as well on how do we create a more collaborative environment between companies and personal brands? Because at the end of the day, the more those groups that, 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 that can work together, that's how you start to humanize your brand more and more. The people that work for your organization that have a voice, those are literally the humans behind the brand, whether we're talking a multi-billion dollar company or a small startup. So that is one of the areas that I'm really excited to get into. And maybe we give a little preview to, to what some of that might look like today, but that's what's on my mind most for that conversation next week. I love it. And and can you see my screen? Is that I can. Yeah. Okay. So yep. guys, all right. So right here we've got Nikki. Nikki's been on the show. Eddie's been a, a repeat offender. He's been on multiple times. We just did a little jam session yesterday in Jordan. Uh, she's gonna be on the show next month. So I absolutely love this. I want we're gonna talk about some of the other folks here. Now, Chris, one thing that I love, respect, admire with you, my friend, is you know, one of the taglines that uh, we do a bunch of we do like webinars and training, what have you, is we call it how do you out teach the competition. So mm -hmm. as a manufacturer, instead of like, you know, being that salesy and how do we spend money on advertising? Boy, how can you be that educator? I had the honor and privilege. You and I did a fun jam session with our buddy Jay Call at Purdue University at the Purdue Manufacturing Extension Partnership. And you were taught, you guys did an amazing, as a matter of fact, I have it on my website. It's on B2B tail. I have the recording. Mm -hmm. You guys want to go there, go to B2B tail, type in Lukey right in the little search box. And you're going to see Chris doing a wonderful jam session at Purdue University, talking about digital transformation. Chris, let's let's scratch that itch for a little bit. Talk a little bit about that digital transformation. I don't know if it's going to, I don't want to give away the secret sauce of what's going on here in Austin, but anything there from that, what our gig in Purdue that you want to touch on today? Yeah, you know, I mean, we were talking about that, that conversation was really built around digital transformation, right? Like how to get started with that, how to make it more approachable. We went into a lot of um, 101 topics for that. And I think a big piece of that is, um, you know, I, I try to, uh, one thing I talk to folks about is micro transformations, for example, how to get started with maybe getting your maintenance department to digitally transform. Um, you know, when I when I look at that, that's like when I was working with Fix Software, yeah. we were often talking about, hey, how do you get one team to move from paper records to, um, you know, things that mm -hmm. are off of that at the end of the day? So that's like into a more digital platform that's cloud based. That's what we were talking about in that capacity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. Love it. All right. So that's, I wanted to hit that real quick. Let's come back to industrial marketing summit. We we're talking about our buddy, Joe Sullivan, Joe Sullivan. If you're not familiar with Joe, boy, I encourage you, welcome you connect with Joe on LinkedIn. Here's the handsome devil right there. He's the founder of gorilla 76. We've got our dear friend, Wendy Covey from true marketing. And of course we've got Adam Beck from Cadena's part solutions. All three of these guys, they've been on a show uh, multiple times. Anybody that you want to, uh, uh, point out uh, other speakers, others, uh, we're excited about every session, any sessions in particular that you want to point out, Chris? 
Yeah. So, you know, I'm really excited as, as you're scrolling through this. I, I mean, I'll, I'll say this. I'll start with something very manufacturing happy hour fashion. I mentioned one of the big aspects of this event is getting to know all the folks that are there. Um, the pre-event on Wednesday night, I think, is going to be a great spot to start. I'm recording an episode of Manufacturing Happy Hour while I'm there. Um, so we're going to be doing that live. And that's a great spot to start connecting with the marketing leaders that are going to be at this event. And one of the things that I tell folks um, is, hey, if you're going to an event, like have a game plan going in, know who you want to meet, also save time for serendipity. That Wednesday is going to be a great time to get started on that. So that's the first thing I'm looking forward to. And I also have the agenda in front of me right now. Um, you know, I'm, I'm excited. What One thing I'm excited for is the mix of large and small companies that are going to be there. I tell folks, mm -hmm. hey, my corporate alma mater, um, Rockwell Automation, they're going to be presenting there. Then you're also going to get to hear from folks that work for boutique marketing agencies mm -hmm. and do other aspects as um, you know, and, and serve the the manufacturing industry in, in a number of unique ways. Absolutely. So here's, you're, you just mentioned uh, Rockwell. So Timothy's going to be speaking from Rockwell. We yep. had, uh, we've had Morgan on the show a couple of times. She's going to be uh, talking. I've seen her in person at the last industrial marketing summit. She's an incredible sp uh, speaker and presenter. Mary is a powerhouse. Uh, she just picked up a new gig recently. She was just on the show last month. And so just a lot of, you know, I love the diverse conversations that we're going to have here. We've got the team from Gorilla 76. They've got Chris Hull from Jasper. That was mm -hmm. a, I know that was a huge coup in a big home run that the team is really excited about. And like you said, you know, the networking. So, I mean, it's just, it's the whole gamut, Chris. It's just the whole, uh, you know, from the networking Wednesday night, the show, anything else that you want to point out to folks that you're excited about at the Industrial Marketing Summit? I think bringing up Jasper is a good topic because when I think of like the AI platform in marketing, Jasper, because um, I know a couple of the co-founders from that company, um, and I think what they're that that's an area personally where I need to learn more about, mm -hmm. and I'm sure most other people at the conference are like, I need to learn how to leverage that as part of my marketing strategy rather than just the storytelling, etc. So. Mm -hmm. That is one thing I'm very much looking forward to there. Yeah, I tell the you know it really covers a lot because you've got content marketers. You mentioned you know different size companies. You've got CJ here from Global Spec. Mm -hmm. I'm super excited to hear what's going on uh, there. Dale's got some really exciting things talking about you as you mentioned right now. AI tools for SEO. That's going to be a, a great. I, I mean, every session. MJ, I had the honor of seeing her speak last year, on or two years ago now at the last Industrial Marketing Summit. She's a powerhouse speaker. So again, guys, lots of an, a, exciting topics here are going to be covered in Austin. Strongly encourage you guys if you haven't considered it, sign up. You want to check it out. I'm going to come back to you guys. All right, I'm going to come back to you, Chris. Let's. Uh, I'm going to check the comments here real quick. Uh, yep. Kelly, she's mentioned the industrial marketing summit and Hey, Diane Beyer. Hey, Kurt, man, every time, every time I tune in something wonderful and inspiring, Hey, how can you not be inspired when you got Chris Lukey on stage, Chris, let's go here. So what are you, what are you hearing boots in the street? You know, you cover a lot of different topics, talk to a lot of different folks in manufacturing 2024, any trends, what are you seeing? What's going on? What's happening and coming out? You know, there's, I, I, I the folks I talked to, I think there's a sense that there's a little softness in this market right now in the manufacturing oh, really? space, um, which isn't a bad thing. Um, you know, I was just listening to Alan Bolley, um, famous economist uh, at the A3 Business Forum a week ago discussing how, hey, you're going to see some softness here in 2024 or likely mm -hmm. see some softness. You know, this is economics we're talking about, yeah, yeah. Um, but it'll give folks a time to get through their backlog and you want to make sure you don't stop selling and marketing during this time because this is just a light a light break if you will because in 2025 things will pick back up again and you want to be prepared for that so in my mind this is the perfect opportunity to put some of the things we've talked about into practice today how do you ramp up your marketing how do you make it more human how do you do a better job of reaching the folks you want to reach because that is the investment you need to make during this time you don't want to and i think there's still two camps of people. There are folks that are in the, um, Hey, I view marketing as an expense. It's trade show support, it's flyers, etc. I do think the amount of people in that group is starting to decrease. I think people 
especially the folks that are going to the industrial marketing summit, they know that marketing is an investment and that it's a revenue generator. Mm -hmm. So um, we're going to see two different camps doing different things. Other folks are really going to double down on marketing efforts, targeted marketing efforts, paid ads, leveraging the voices of the people on their team. And other groups are probably going to lay low, unfortunately. And one thing I'd like to see is us trying to get as many people into the camp of the action takers and the doers versus the folks that are on the side of, hey, I'm just going to wait it out, for example. Right. right. Well, again, so I want I want to come back to that theme of like out teaching the competition. You have your podcast, you're doing live streams, you are doing, you know, you're speaking at an event. You are constantly, you're bringing on all sorts of subject matter experts and all of your questions are based around what? education, ed educating your listeners, right? Mm -hmm. So for manufacturers out there, you know, we've talked about like that consistency, some of that content, what like, you know, say they've, they've started, they have, they, they have nothing, right? They're just starting from scratch. We've talked about that digital transformation, but they are, they're like, you know what? I want to get things going. What, and you talk about, all right, I could start on LinkedIn with some posts, but what, you know, if they want to get going in some type of like a really steady content strategy, and like, I love your tagline, I help industrial companies turn, turning marketing in, uh, expenses into marketing investments. Yeah. How do you turn those expenses into investments? So I'm going to start, I actually wrote an article for the Industrial Marketing Summit not too long ago called Three Common Mistakes Manufacturers Make in Marketing. Nice. Um, and I've got a solution to all of them. So maybe this is an opportunity to kind of start yeah. going through that. So let's how do you run, get? Let's run through all of them. Yeah. So how do you get started? The first thing, the first mistake I mentioned is manufacturers try to market to everyone. You know, they're like, we call on all five of these verticals. We call on engineering, purchasing, yada, yada, like every department in the company. We need a message that's going to resonate with all of them. And when you try to reach every, when you try to market to everyone, you end up marketing to no one. Um what I tell folks is the first thing you got to do if you're creating a content strategy is you need to know who you're talking to, who your avatar is. Um, give your avatar a name. You know, let's say Sarah is an engineer at a manufacturing company, a widget manufacturer in Los yep. Angeles. Yep. Um, she's 33 years old. Um, you know, she just started her family, but she also she's been an engineer for most of her career but she just got promoted and now she's leading a team of people right. for the first time. Right. I'm talking about Sarah because Sarah is one of the key avatars for manufacturing happy hour. When I'm creating content on manufacturing happy hour, I'm asking myself, is Sarah going to like this content? Because yes, she needs to know about the latest automation technology, but right. she also needs to know how to recruit a young and diverse workforce as well and how to lead that workforce. So when I'm creating episodes of Manufacturing Happy Hour, I'm creating it for Sarah. And I think manufacturers need to take that first step back to be like, okay, yes, we do sell and market to all of these different groups of people, but we really need to be focused on Jack first, as an example. So write a couple pair, figure out who that avatar is, write a couple paragraphs about them, and start building a content strategy that is appealing to Sarah or to Jack. Not to Sarah and Jack, pick one, start small. And then as you start marketing to Jack and you realize, oh, Sarah's listening to this quite a bit as well. What does Sarah care about? Well, define that avatar as well. But don't try to be like, I'm talking to Jack and Jill and Jack and Sally and John and, you know, Sandra and Bob. Start, start with a very specific persona. Figure out what their challenges are. They're frequently asked questions, the opportunities they're trying to capitalize on and build content that appeals to that person. All right, dude, that was a drop the mic moment right there. So I want to like, Whitney, I couldn't agree more. Whitney, preach it. Uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing this cor cor correctly. Wanyana, uh, creating a buyer persona, absolutely perfect. And Miles says, Chris, sounds like I'm listening to myself, but Chris, we have so many products. We must talk about them all. But I absolutely love that. And dude, I'm writing my second book right now. You know who I'm writing it to? Lynn. I'm nice. like, I'm split, like every sentence I'm writing it to Lynn and awesome. Lynn's a client of mine. And so I, I couldn't agree more. So guys, that was a big drop to Mike right there. Number one, know your buyer persona, Chris, Lukey, please enlighten us. What's number two. So number two is, um, manufacturers often create the wrong kind of content. Um, and there's a time and place for highly produced videos, you know, very, 
investment heavy activities with drone shots of your facility where you talk about how much you care about your customers and that that's your main differentiator. But there's a lot of other stuff you need to be doing as well. And it doesn't need to be a $30,000 video project right out of the gate. You know, for example, I, I what I'd love to see manufacturers do more of is creating more bite-sized consistent content where sure that you know, that drone footage of the factory looks great. And like I said, that is a good thing to have on your website. You shouldn't not invest in that. But if you have a CEO or an executive or some person on the team that has that type of maybe a camera ready personality or has a lot of insights that you can pull out as the marketing leader and, you know, post on social media or have them post on social media, I'd sure as heck let, rather see the CEO of a small mid-sized machine shop on his iPhone, um, you know, talking about a challenge that they solved that day mm -hmm. um, in a very candid way, rather than that fancy video that talks about that facility, because it's a lot easier to create that iPhone video every day. I could do that right after this call. I could do it during this call, for example. Um, so I'd like to see easier, more consistent content like that. Sure, it's not going to have the same production value, but throw captions on it. You know, if it's insightful and it's helpful to the ideal buyer, that's what's important. Drop the mic number two right there, Mr. Lukey. Absolutely love it. So, guys, manageable content, content that can you that will that you can put out easily and effectively, and that resonates with that ideal customer. Refer back to number one. So we've got number one, know your ideal customer. Number two, putting out just great, consistent, and efficient content. Am I saying that correctly, Chris? Was that, yep. was that it? Okay. I'd say efficient is a great word for it, right? Stuff that doesn't require that heavy of a lift to create. Yep. If you're comfortable with this, I'm going to chime in with before we di dive into number three. My my dear friend Alan, Alan's in Indiana. Dear friend, what does the landscape of business development and manufacturing look like? Chris Lukey, any thoughts there? It's a big question. I'm gonna I could take that question a number of different directions, but what's the landscape of business development look like? You know, I do think there's a lot there there's there's still a ton of relationship driven aspects to the manufacturing space if i'm out there and i'm doing business development it's not just one on one meetings with customers or potential partners for examples it's having a holistic approach of let's say those one on one sales calls those one on one meetings as well as some of the things that you do to broadcast your brand mm -hmm. on social media on video on podcasts etc so i think it's figuring out Again, kind of going back to what we're talking about, like when you're doing business development, who are you trying to reach? Who's that avatar? Start there and then do these things that play to your strengths to start reaching out to them. You know, do the one on one meetings. Maybe video is not your thing. That's OK. You can appear on someone's podcast that's audio only. You can do written posts or photo posts on LinkedIn. There are a lot of different ways to create content that plays to your strengths. So that's what I'd say the nature of business development looks like. All right. Great answer. Great question. Thank you, Alan. Appreciate it. You know what my answer to that one is, Chris? What's that? Live streams, man. I think live yeah. streams are, you know, your podcast live streams. I couldn't, I'm anybody that's willing to listen. I am preaching. What a great way. Just before we hit number three, I just real quick, I'm going to divert. Think of the relationships. I know I mentioned it earlier, but think of the relationships that you've built purely because of your podcast that mm -hmm. you would have never had these conversations in, in, Right. I mean, can you hit on that for a minute? Oh, yeah. I mean, there are a lot of people that, quite frankly, I never would have met without the manufacturing yeah. happy hour platform. And it's right. not I think some people mistake like the idea of influencer with celebrity like it. You know, at the end of the day, um, it's just a, it, it gives you a basis to meet people that you otherwise might not have had an excuse to meet. Like when I think about when I was a salesperson, like if I'm calling an executive, like I'm, I'm asking for their time to mm -hmm. take a meeting, to talk to them about something that could genuinely help their business, but yeah. they don't know me. They don't really know who right. I am. I didn't have a lot of credibility doing that. Now, when I reach out to someone, say maybe someone that I'd like to take on as a customer at some point, I don't even need to approach them about being like, Hey, I think we right. could partner together in some way. I can be like, Hey, would you like to appear on my manufacturing podcast? Because you're a manufacturing leader and I know you'd have something to contribute to my audience. So 
it's given me an opportunity to build relationships in a way I otherwise wouldn't have had because I have something I can give to people before I ever have to ask for anything in return. Couldn't agree more. That was dropped to mic number three, even though we haven't hit point number three. Chris, I want to be respectful of your time because I know you are a busy man. Can you please share? We hit number one, number two. What is number three, please? Number three kind of brings our conversation full circle. Manufacturers often don't leverage the personal brands of the people at their company as much as they should. Um, because back to what we're talking about, how do you humanize your brand? Well, how about the humans that work for your organization? And I think there's there's sometimes this concern that it's like, well, if we're putting all this effort into leveraging Jane as yeah. one of the voices of our company, what happens if Jane leaves? Um, and my answer to that is it's like, well, it's inevitable. Like some people are going to leave your company someday. We don't live in the world where people are going to stay somewhere for 35 right. years and retire. Right. But that's why having a bunch of people with strong personal brands is great because then let's say you have 10 people on your team with strong personal brands. You know what? Inevitably, a couple of those are going to leave at some point, but you're not dead in the water because you have a holistic strategy that's taken advantage of a lot of the folks that are on your team, not just the executive, not just the C-suite. Pick people that, you know, Maybe they don't have um, a big audience today, or maybe they don't have the big title today, but they've got the skill set to appeal to a bigger audience. Like, think about those type of folks. So that's, that's and, and I think the biggest thing is build a content strategy that leverages the expert, expertise of the people on your team, and that humanizes your brand. And here's the other fun trick, Kurt, because we talked about how you got to pick one avatar to go after, right? You can't go after everyone at once. Well, if you have a bunch of personal brands on your team, a bunch of people with strong personal brands, maybe one of them has a voice that really appeals to the engineering team. Maybe one of them has a voice that really appeals to the executive team. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, you start solving that problem of being like, well, we have multiple personas we need to reach, right? Well, here are different people that are going to play really well at meeting those different type of personas. So. That's the last thing I'll say in that regard. And, and you know, the nice thing about everything I've mentioned, these mistakes folks make is trying to market to everyone, um, you know, being not, not focusing on little bite-sized consistent content or not leveraging personal brands. These are things that don't take a capital investment to fix. These are things that if you take the time to put a quick plan around it, you can start capitalizing on very, very quickly. Okay. Man, that was mic drop number four. We're going to take a moment of silence and just kind of like savor. Dude, that was a master class. You broke that down with such simplicity, yet such high level strategy. Just, I think you've done it before, Chris. I think this was not your first role. Am I, am I, I mean, I did enough? just write the article. I did just write the article. So well, it wasn't, you, it was, it was fresh in my mind, but it was, it was fresh, a good well, opportunity hey, to talk I, through it. Guys, let's, all right, recap that. Know your ideal customer. You know, in our little training, we love to call them your soulmate. Who's that soulmate that needs a problem that you're delivering that, you know, the, the solution that you offer on a daily basis? Who's out there that needs you? And think about it, Chris, like, you know, when that customer finds you, they might even be more excited that they found you than you found that, you know, invite then vice versa. Because maybe, like you said, it's Janie, they're an engineer at Boeing and they have somebody up the food chain that's really grinding them to find a solution. And they just found like this little tiny machine shop that knows how to manufacture this little widget like nobody else does. And now they're thrilled to find you. So that was, dude, people do business with people humanizing your brand. I encourage you guys. I welcome you. Go back, hit the rewind button on this masterclass and just soak in all the brilliance that Chris just laid out. Chris, I know you're super busy. Again, we're going to close things out. Industrial Marketing Summit, Austin, Texas, next Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Be there or, man, you're going to have FOMO. Jeff Long just sent me a note. He's unable to make it and he texts me, Kurt, I have major FOMO. So Jeff, we're going to miss you next week. Chris, close us out, please. What or who is inspiring you for 2024? Who or what is really inspiring you as we're go running into 2024? Oh, man. Um, I'm going to give you just a random one, actually. So just kind of a complete 180 from the rest of our conversation. Um, Jesse Itzler is a guy that I really enjoy following. Um, and, and to put it into context, he's... He's written some books, Living with a Seal, like what it was like living with a Navy Seal, yeah. living with the monks, what it was like living with monks for a while. Um, yeah. 
he i'm trying to think of the best way he's married to um Spanx. yeah sarah from sarah Spanx, blakely, sarah blakely. Sarah blakely of, yeah um so power couple and in his younger years he was a rapper so um he's got yeah. quite quite the quite the life um and i think he's a part owner of the atlanta hawks as well he, but and he founded uh if i'm not mistaken was it is it net jets that he, marquee he, jet marquee jet Mark, okay yeah. yeah yeah so i mean he all right Great answer, dude. I haven't had Jesse as, a, as an answer, and I'm on his email list. I'm a very active follower of Jesse Itzler. Boy, uh, check him out. Go uh, follow his podcast. Uh, I think he has a podcast. He has a community, and uh, he he's a powerhouse. That is, yeah, that's a great answer. yeah. The, the reason I bring Jesse up is because one of his men, like, he's definitely a guy that, in a general standpoint, he's like, you know, live your life to the fullest on a regular basis. But yeah. we've all heard that kind of generic inspirational line before. I think right. what he's really good at is he's like, pick one year defining activity that mm -hmm. you want to do. And I don't necessarily know what my year defining activity is yet. This will be the first year I'm fully dedicated to growing manufacturing happy hour full time for the entire year. So that's definitely something mm -hmm. there. But his year defining activity last year was he rode his bike with a bunch of buddies um, from the West Coast to the East Coast. They rode their bikes across the country. And right. so it's about thinking like not even this isn't even just career advice it's like what are the things you want to accomplish out of life and like make sure you're doing those things so you know i'm excited for you know going on tour with manufacturing happy hour a bit more than i've done in the past a lot of these events that are coming up um and then book writing there's some other things that are in my very near future as well well i'll tell you what my friend i'm saying this by uh, bottom of my heart you're a dear friend i just i i I've, it's been an honor privilege continues to be an honor and privilege to be in your circle and your community. I just, uh, you know, I find you inspiring. You're just a man of ethics. I admire, respect, and just love the work that you're doing and how you're, I don't know a bigger advocate for U.S. manufacturing. So, hey, if you guys have been sitting for the past 50 whatever minutes, it's a great time to stand up. And how about, let's give a standing ovation for our dear friend, Chris Lukey, Mr. Manufacturing Happy Hour. You just U.S. He's just an advocate for manufacturing, just doing a wonderful, incredible job. Chris, thank you. I applaud you. I salute you. I commend you for all the work that you're doing. Appreciate your friendship. Cannot wait to meet you in person next week. It's going to be highlight and getting to meet a bunch of our friends, Whitney and I think Diana and uh, Kelly and a few other friends that said that they're going to be there next week. So, guys, thank you for joining us. Thank you for your comments. Always appreciate you being here. Damon, we missed you today. I wish you could have been here with Chris. I know he was dying to be here today. Chris, parting, any last words of wisdom that you want to share with everybody? You know, hey, just look for the little things you can do to get more consistent with sharing your story. Commenting on posts, bite-sized content, photos, short written posts, short videos recorded on your iPhone. Um, you know, I spent the first nine months recording videos on my iPhone. I didn't have any fancy equipment. Fancy equipment is just an excuse. So, Find ways to start contributing to conversations and sharing your story, a story that resonates with your ideal customer audience. Start doing that ASAP and hopefully you're going to the Industrial Marketing Summit where you're going to be around people that are doing that on a regular basis. Well, hey, God bless you, brother. Just wishing you monster success on your entrepreneurial journey this year. I have tons more to talk to you about. We got to get you back on the show. Can't wait to see you next week. Guys, I'm, we're going to close out. Do me a favor. Man, just if you could be an inspiration to someone, just like our dear friend Chris Lukey was today, go out and just be someone's inspiration. The world's going to be a little better place. Chris, hang out with me for one second. We'll be back here Monday. We have another awesome guest on Monday. And then, Chris, I'm hoping to do my little live show at the Industrial Marketing Summit next week, working that Excellent. out with Wendy and Joe, uh, Joe Sullivan and the team. So hopefully we'll see you guys in Austin. So thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.